The rollout of the new Volkswagen Amarok continues. We've sampled the higher spec variants, and now we're getting some time in the more humble models, including this Life TDI 500. So what's the verdict? Stay tuned to find out. Before we get into that, please like this video, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, and give us your thoughts on the new Amarok in the comments below. The Life is the cheapest way to get into an Amarok that you'd realistically use for family duties. The core entry point much more aimed at the commercial market. It starts at just over $60,000 including on-road costs, with the only option being metallic paint, any colour other than white, setting you back $990. There are plenty of rivals in the crowded dual cab market, including the Mazda BT50 XTR, Nissan Navara STX, Toyota Hilux SR and obviously the closely related Ford Ranger. Though VW has cleverly avoided direct comparison, pricing the life between the XLS and XLT models. As you can see, it's a fairly no frills package compared to say an Aventura or Panamericana, but we've still got LED lights here at the front, we've got 17 inch alloy wheels and body coloured front bumper, mirrors and door handles to make it look a little bit less tradey spec. The Life also scores the 2.0-litre twin-turbo 4-cylinder diesel and 10-speed automatic combo rather than the single-turbo 6-speed offering in the basic core. Fuel consumption is claimed to be 7.2 litres per 100k on the combined cycle, which gives a theoretical range of more than 1,100 kilometres. Inside, the Amarok Life doesn't necessarily feel bottom rung. It's not a dual cab for people who like to show off with manually adjustable cloth seats and single zone climate control, but the wheel is leather, these dashes of silver brighten up the interior, there's a variety of materials used rather than everything just being hard grey plastic. I think for what it is, it's not too bad a place to sit. The infotainment is handled by the smaller of the two available screens, but wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard, as is wireless charging. A quick word to wrap up on the interior. Kudos to VW for providing extra storage solutions in these lower spec models, including the second glove box and this dash top area here, but form has taken precedence over function in a couple of areas. VW clearly wants this big silver gear shift surround, which is fine, but it's forced the cup holders back into a less convenient location and eliminated the little storage tray ahead of the gear shift that you'll find in the Ranger. Likewise, these shortcut buttons look very nice, but it's forced the physical aircon controls to become digital, and small adjustments can be a bit of a pain. Nothing's a deal breaker, but just something to mention. VW has included the full safety suite, including nine airbags and all the active safety systems. As a result, it unsurprisingly scores the same 5-star ANCAP rating as the closely related Ford Ranger. One area the previous Amarok struggled slightly was rear accommodation, but a significant wheelbase stretch means the new one isn't too bad, though I know some larger folks may struggle. That aside, there isn't much to mention. We've got Isofix points on each side, we've got a 12 volt outlet, but no USB ports or air vents. Unsurprisingly, the Amarok's tray is exactly the same size as the Ford Ranger, and we'll put the exact numbers on the screen here. There's no liner as standard, but there is LED lighting and six tie-down points, and the tailgate lock is integrated into the central locking. Payload for life is essentially a ton, pretty much, and even at the maximum 3,500 kilo towing capacity, you can still carry around 600 kilos on board, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, we have to start on a sour note. This textured plastic dash actually looks quite cool. It's not your regular just hard grey lump, but creates some of the worst reflections in the windscreen I've ever come across. If the sun's low or at a particular angle, you can barely see where you're going. Thankfully, there are plenty of nice things to say too. The powertrain is obviously familiar from the Ford Ranger and it works equally well here. The 2.0-litre bi-turbo engine isn't nearly as refined as the V6 in higher spec models, but it's still got plenty of punch. Where the Amarok does diverge from the Ranger is its chassis and steering tune. The steering's got a bit more weight to it, though no real greater connection, and it steers really quite accurately. Part of the reason for this is VW has gone for a stiffer suspension setup, which gives the Amarok impressive manoeuvrability and control for a dual cab, though at the expense of a fairly reactive ride. Nevertheless, combined with the Continental tyres, the Amarok is very stable on tarmac or unsealed surfaces, even at speed. 
We also went bush to test the Amarok Life's off-road credentials and even on highway spec tyres, the combination of the dual range transfer case and rear diff lock handled the slippery conditions with ease. With more appropriate rubber, ground clearance would be your only real hurdle, with there being the occasional knock on the underside through some of the deeper ruts. So where do we end up with the Amarok Life? It's a really good ute, very capable, no surprise given what it's based on, and the pricing and specification neatly sidesteps any direct comparison with the Ford Ranger. To sum up, the Life is probably all the ute you could ever need, but it might not be all the ute you ever want. So if you're in the market, I'd at least check out a style to make sure you're okay with the lower grade. Thanks for watching.